Oh, hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housework, and today is the day. We are going to tack weld this thing together and see if the hinge system works. And if it does, we are very close to completing this 2x72 grinder. Just uh, after this is all completed, the only thing we'll have to do is cut and figure out the tracking pillar that's going to go on top of the two receiver tubes here. Now, this weekend, I just let all of these pieces of steel soak in straight up vinegar for about 48 hours. I came and checked on it over the weekend and scrubbed off some of the top layers of mill scale, but vinegar was a really easy and non-toxic way to remove the mill scale. After I was done removing it this morning when I came in, I had to scrub off a few pieces of uh, chunks of mill scale. In fact, there's there's still a little bit here. This is something that I think uh, that the, when the steel mill puts these together, they use some sort of handwriting on here and stuff, and I couldn't really fully get that off. Not 100% concerned about that. That's okay. When I pulled the parts out of the vinegar, I realized really quickly that these would flash rust, so I sprayed them down with a rust, and that seemed to really keep the, the, uh, the flash rust down and made sure that that all kind of worked out. Before I tack weld it together though, I will hit it with some acetone. That way, you know, the steel is really clean. I've actually never welded anything this clean before. It's all etched and nice and beautiful. It smells like a pickle, but uh, other than that, I think it's gonna weld together pretty well. Also, I went ahead and took the blunt edges off of all of the pieces, if there were any. And the reason I did that is because I'm hoping to powder coat all of these at some point. So, and I know, and I don't know a ton about powder coating, but I do know that uh, sharp edges are not a good thing for powder coats. So that it has a hard time sticking to those tight corners. So I went ahead and rounded off those edges, made sure everything was rounded over properly. Now I'm going to probably have to work this out in my head a little bit and do some math to figure out exactly where the center point is on this plate. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and kind of place everything where it needs to go. And then we're going to clean it and we're going to tack it all together. And I, I'm super excited. In fact, I, I'm a little nervous about it. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, when you get to that point, you're like, this is it. This is the time where I'll figure out if this thing even works or not. So anyway, I'm excited to get this underway. And uh, I think we just got to jump in with both feet. So screw it. Let's do it.
So we've made some really awesome progress today, guys, on the 2x72 belt grinder build. As you can see, we got it all tacked together. We got the motor mounted. We've got the old platen arm. Uh, you know, I grabbed the old platen arm for my other design and threw it on here just to kind of see what it looks like. I'm in the process of actually redesigning the platen uh, for this because I want more platen surface. I want to get nine and a half inches here if possible. So let's go over what I did. So you saw I set up a whole bunch of complicated jigs and magnets and everything to kind of hold this thing together. I can't imagine trying to do this without threaded rod, nuts, bolts, the whole thing to kind of keep it in place. If I didn't do that, I don't think I would have achieved the level of accuracy that I did achieve with this thing. It's actually really quite fluid. There's not a lot of play in any of it. As I turn it, it, it looks really good to me. I don't see a lot of gaps or anything that kind of look like they need to be played with really. I mean, everything looks pretty good. A little bit of warping on these pieces here, but actually, I don't know if that's just my, could be my eye playing tricks on me. Anyway, one of the things I'm really impressed with in this build is the balance of it. Um, as you can see, it wants to kind of just stay wherever you put it. Now that's partially because I've got this nut tightened down. If I loosen this nut quite a bit, um, it still pretty much does that. I mean, it doesn't want to move too much. Its home position is actually like this, which I am a little bit confused on. I, when, when you turn this thing, right, it stays in this position. But ultimately, if, if you can kind of get it to go, which is hard to do, it really does want to live like this, which as it's being operated, I would imagine about 75% of its life is going to live in the vertical position and about 25% in the horizontal. Now, for me, I, I just think that that's a win. I, don't, I can't find anything wrong with that, with that design, but yeah, the balance of this thing is great. The forward and backward balance is amazing as well. Uh, without the platen arm on it or any sort of tooling in the receivers, it's a little tail heavy by the motor, but it will not fall down, so. If you push it, it'll go, but just a little bit of tooling in there and it will stay put. Now that might change when we get the tracking mechanism here, but I, I doubt it. I don't think it will. So anyway, it came together pretty, pretty nicely. I'm very impressed with it. And uh, as you saw, the rosette welds worked out pretty, pretty nicely. In the future, I'll probably add two more holes here so that um, I can get a little bit more strength out of these rosettes. Uh, again, it feels really solid to me. I'm not done putting the welds in it yet, so I need to do a few more um, beads. I do think though that this thing is insanely solid. I don't, it feels like a big, heavy industrial tool, which is exactly what I wanted. So yeah, I'm stoked. Next step is gonna be putting that tracking mechanism together and getting that all put on and building the platen arm, but I, you know I'm definitely gonna throw a belt on this thing as soon as it's able and uh, see what we can throw, throw at it. So anyhow guys, if you got something out of today's video, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you are interested in a free way to support my channel, there are links down in the description where you can buy anything that's in my workshop and studio here. All my tools, it's broken down into little tiny uh, categories. You can kind of dig down in there and find everything from my personal safety equipment and tools, hammers, everything I use right here. And that's a free way to support my channel. Now, if you wanna take your support to the next level, I do have a Patreon page. And this month I gained one more patron, Ross Anderson. Thank you so much for pledging $5 a month, dude. That is amazing. Again, it's an affirmation for me that I'm doing the right things. I'm pushing forward and, and making steps in the right direction. It, it is an amazing feeling when I get that notification that somebody has pledged and joined up on Patreon. So thanks, Ross. I appreciate it. 
If you leave me a comment, I do read and respond to all of them as long as they are productive. And uh, yeah, so listen, guys, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework.